Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the campus of Tabor College as we get ready for tonight's KCAC action. And we got a nice big one tonight as Tabor College Blue Jays will host the Falcons from Friends University. I'm Jim Paulus, and I'm here with Rod Ham. Good evening, Rod. Good evening, Jim. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a hotly contested game tonight between two top teams in the KCAC, Tabor College. 18 and 1 conference record and right behind them is 17 and 2 friends university Tabor coached by Sean Reed once again 18 and 1 in the conference 21 and 4 overall last outing a 57 48 win over Bethel College friends university 17 and 2 20 and 5 overall 81 66 win over Southwestern in their last outing and uh, the big game was last Saturday when St. Mary's was able to get a victory over St. Mary's uh, out of Leavenworth, and that put them in a tie for second at 17 and two with St. Mary's. Both teams come in with quite the streak. The uh, the Friends University Falcons come in with a, I believe, a 13 game winning streak, and the Blue Jays were a 12 game winning streak, and the Blue Jays with a nine game winning streak. So something has to give tonight as we are winding down in the conference season. We'll quickly get to the starters for the Friends University Falcons. And starting out for the Friends Falcons, number three, Raylan Garner, a 5'6 sophomore from Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Number five, Lauren McIver, a 5'9 sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. And number 20, Cassie Kinneberg, six foot senior from Mays, Kansas. Valley Center High School. Number 21, Corey Babcock, 5'6 junior from Thayer, Kansas, by way of Neosho Community College, and rounding out the starting lineup for the Friends Falcons. Number 32, Taylor Jackson, 6'3 junior from Houston, Texas. And now for your Tabor College Blue Jays. We've got number zero. It's zero tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had to double check. Zero last uh, the pink out night. It was uh, 52. But back to her uh, regular number. Zero. Janisha Hendricks. She's a 5'6 senior from Topeka, Kansas. And you've got number two, Tegan Worth. 5'8 junior from Hillsboro, Kansas. Followed by 5'7 Cassidy Beam, a junior from McPherson, Kansas. And we're going to go down to number 22, 5'11", Maddie McCoy, a senior from Wellsville, Kansas. And last, number 43, Olivia Owens, a 5'11", senior from Hutchinson, Kansas, Beeler High School. Well, as we mentioned, friends coming in on that 12-game winning streak, they have a couple players that are top of the conference. Uh, Gardner comes in with 17.4 points and seven boards, and Taylor Jackson, 14.2 points and 11 boards. So... I think the matchups down low will be really important for the Blue Jays. I watched the game last week online, the Friends St. Mary's game, and McIver, Lauren McIver, 5'9 sophomore, really had a good game and uh, pushed the ball, got some good, got some good quick shots off against St. Mary's, and we look for her to push it again here against this. Highly touted Tabor defense, and right away McCoy with the pushes the ball away there from Jackson Babcock. Gets it over to uh, McIver. McIver goes, and that is tipped out of bounds, and that'll stay with the Friends Falcons. 12 on the shot clock. McIver kind of runs the show for Friends and very athletic guard to get it into Jackson. Over to McIver, she gets the pick. Blocked by Hendricks, and she's gonna go all the way. And no foul. A little bit of a little bit of a bump there on that uh, layup. Just enough to knock Hendricks off her mark. Worth with the rebound, and Blue Jays will bring it up. Still no score here. Hendricks gets a pick, gets over in front of the free throw line. Gets it over to Owens. Owens to McCoy. McCoy resets here. 10 on the shot clock. Hendricks in the corner. She'll take that three. No good. Good rebound there almost. almost. I thought 
I thought, I thought she had Worf it too. Going to have that rebound. Jackson up top hands it over to McIver. She will shoot that three and rolls it in. And that's what I was seeing out of her last week, and just watching her uh, shoot that shot in rhythm, and uh, she really kind of runs the show, like I said, for the Falcons. She has definitely had scored. Her averages are up for conference play. Owens for three. That's the short. Picked up by McIver. She'll push it up. She gets a pick. Trying to get it into Jackson. Nice help there with from Beam. Almost looked like that. Oh, another almost pick there by McCoy. And McCoy almost could have uh, picked off that cross-court pass. Tried to get it into Jackson. McCoy's right oh, there with the jump ball. It'll go for, towards the Blue Jays. So far, the Blue Jays have done a good job with Jackson again. 14.2 a game. A little pressure now put on by the Falcons. McCoy will bring it up as the Falcons fall back. Falcons up 3-0. Beam over to Hendricks. She'll get a pick. Over to Worth. Gets it into Owens. Shot clock at three. And that will go to the Blue Jays, but only three on the shot clock. Taylor Jackson at six foot three, up against Owens at 5'11, and Owens just not comfortable shooting over the top of her. As we got three seconds on the shot clock here, Owens gonna have to get something up quick. Wasn't able to do it. So that turnover will go to the Falcons. McIver picked up by Hendricks. Little pick and roll. And Jackson unable to hit. Blue Jays will push it here. And Owens. Oh, no. my goodness. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know how she caught that. Got it up in the air and off the glass softly. I mean, that was full speed ahead down court. And it was good. Owens was, no, uh, noticing that uh, Jackson was slow coming down, sprinted. Jackson, and that was a nice roll down for her and lay up 5-2 Falcons. And too easy a pass for Babcock to make there to Jackson. There'll have to be more ball pressure on, from the guards for the Blue Jays in the future to prevent that from happening. McCoy up top, gets it over to Worth. McCoy will shoot the three, no good. Rebound by Babcock, and she'll push it up. Jackson up top. Oh, Garner. Just, Garner just pulls the ball away from McCoy. And McCoy was right there with the defense. 7-2 Falcons. No substitutions in this game at this point. I just want to say that two friends players get up off the bench. Beam gets around a, a pick. She'll shoot a two, and that's good. Nice two-man game going down there between And there are McCoy a couple of Blue Jays beam, yeah. looking to check in as well. I think Bowen and McGee. Falcons getting a lot of pressure now. Kinneberg gets it, can't get it to fall. Oof. Got a little bit of shoving going on down low. Worth on the wing now, Bean cross court to Hendricks. Now McCoy in the corner. They're going to set it up here. Owens a little short on that one. McIver with the ball. Garner drives, can't get it to go. Worth right there on defense. Owens with the rebound. Just enough push out of the lane there. Just under five minutes here. Nice move by Hendricks, but unable to hit the shot. Babcock with the rebound. She'll push over to McIver. 
And nice strong take, but unable to hit. Worth with the rebound. And both teams dragging now. The game is fast paced. And Worth just going to go all the way up. Looks like she traveled. Again, the, that Jackson down there she, has an influence. She had a layup, and Jackson was back because it was such a quick shot. Jackson never got all the way down, down court to, on that last transition. Never made it all the way down court, so she was back, ready for that. And I, I don't think Worth was expecting her. So lots of uh, lots of substitutions with both teams. Number 12, Sadie Hopman, six foot junior from Minnesota coming in for the Falcons. Now we're gonna get a I think we're gonna get an illegal screen there by the Falcons. First first foul of the game, six also, minutes in. Also in for the Falcons, Jaden Glasgow, 5'5 five, five sophomore from Colorado. For the Blue Jays, Chloe Bowen, 6'2 senior out of Oklahoma, and Lily Veer just checked in the game, hits a three-pointer for the Blue Jays. Lily Veer, a freshman out of Newton, Kansas, Berean Academy. Friends tried to switch to a zone there, and a couple of the players looked confused, and Lily Veer was left wide open up top. Also into the game, number five, Maya McGee, senior from Ardmore, Oklahoma. Fellas on the Blue Jays, number 22, Maddie McCoy. That's her first. Team's first. Garner at the line to shoot two. First free throw is no good. Second one goes, and we, she'll sub out. Babcock right back in. So 8-7 Falcons, 3.54 to go here. A little token pressure here, just enough to take some time off. Beer has it on the wing again. This time doesn't take the three. Has to kick it out to Bean. Now McCoy has it. Elbow oh. kicks it out to Veer for three, and it's good. Uh. Lily Veer, freshman from Berean, hits another three-pointer, giving the Blue Jays a 10-8 lead here. Three minutes to go in this first quarter. No foul called on Garner, who goes into Cassidy Beam. Beam falls to the ground. She just backed up. Looked like the, looked like there could have been a foul there, and could have gone either way. And here's Veer lining up another three. That's oh. good. Lily Veer is on fire here in Fuego in the Tabor Gym tonight, and I think that's surprising a little bit to the Friends Falcons. They're leaving her open. That's three for her now. 13 to eight, Blue Jays. I'm curious why they changed the defense. They were doing, they were stopping Tabor that first six minutes of the game. And we've got a three-pointer by the Falcons. McGee with the rebound. We got Sadie, Beer over there again. Sadie Hopman with the three there. Now McCoy gets the pass from Veer, goes up, can't get it to fall. Bowen clears it, and now we got a jump ball that will go to the Falcons. Back in for the Falcons will be McIver, Jackson, and Kinneberg for the Blue Jays. It'll be Brooke Berlin and Alicia Baker. McCoy with a long eight-minute stretch there. Probably going to sit out this quarter and then the break. 13-8 right at the two-minute mark. Trinity Johnson picked. checking in for the Falcons during that little break. Nice good defense hands by, there. Yeah, good hands by Berlin, a sophomore out of Clearwater, Kansas. Shot clock at under 10 now. Jackson, nice off the board. 13-10 Blue Jays. McGee looking, finds Berlin. Now off to Baker. Baker left open for three, and it's That's good. good. And... Coach Jaderson's going to call a timeout for the Falcons. 
And he's seen enough of those three pointers. He'll get quickly get a 30 second timeout. Taylor College now four three pointers in a row. Is that I right? I think so. That's yes, 12 of the 16. Is that right? So I believe that's right. Well, tonight's game is brought to you by the Eichen Agency. The Eichen Agency is based out of Fairview, Oklahoma, and has locations all across the Midwest and is proud to be a sponsor of Blue Jay Athletics. Thank you, Eichen Agency and Phil Eichen. So 135, 16 to 10 Blue Jays. With the Falcons were up 7 2, is that right? Yeah, so it's exactly been a 14 right. 3 run since that. And you, as you mentioned, almost all of it from behind the arc. Um, and if we've said it once, we've said it 100 times. Embrace the three. Embrace the three. <laughs> well, especially if they're going to stay in that zone. Yeah. I think the uh, Blue Jays move that ball around. They're going to get an open three. Drive in yes, there. Yes, nice Lily, defense. Lily Veer with the steal gets it to McGee cross court. Now they're in that zone again. Bowen has it at the elbow. Nowhere to go. Going to hand off to McGee. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Oh. Tries to get it to Bowen. Doesn't. Nice pick off there by number 20, Kenneborough. Good defensive stand by the Falcons. McIver driving. Cut off by McGee. Now turns and shoots. Can't get it to fall. Jackson with the rebound. Goes up and... Foul is going to be called. It's going to be against McGee or um, Maya McGee. It's good, good offensive board by Jackson. Bowen had her blocked out, but the ball came almost straight down to her instead of bouncing out a little wider than it you normally think. In the game in January, Jackson had 17 and 17 against the Blue Jays. First free throw is short. Jackson does shoot in the 50s from the free throw line. 47 seconds here in this first quarter. Second one's no good. Berlin with the rebound. Coach Reed calling one of his many set plays. He does have, he is, does have a list. Which is good. And it works. McGee now off to Baker. Baker down to Bowen. Bowen fakes. Kicks out to Veer. Veer drives, goes up for a little floater. Oh. And it's corralled Eight. by the Falcons. 18 on the shot clock. Garner brings it up quickly. Now tries hands off almost to Jackson. Jackson That's travels. That's a travel. So 11 seconds here in the quarter. Taylor and the Blue Jays is open after the quarter break. They could go up by nine here with a, one of their... Three pointers. Need to hustle here. I'd get it to Veer. Having a hard time getting this going. And we're gonna get a foul on Jackson, which is actually better than a that's better than getting a shot, honestly. She had the block up top, but definitely wiped out McGee at down low. She did have the block, I'll agree with you. Yeah. She, she did wipe out McGee as well. So Maya McGee, you know, go to the line to shoot too. And the first one's good. 0.7 seconds on the shot clock. The only thing the Blue Jays could do now is if she misses to tip it. And the second one rolls out. Jackson gets the rebound. That'll it. That'll be it for the first quarter. 17-10 Blue Jays after one. We'll take a short break. Be back to the second quarter. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted.
All right, we're back here. Blue Jays will have it to start the quarter as there were a few jump balls during that quarter. To start out this second quarter, it'll be Owens, Hendr Hendricks, Berlin, Baker, and Worth. And, of course, Lily Veer with those three three-pointers leads the way with nine points. Coming Jackson out of the, with four. Coming out of the huddle for the Falcons, Jackson, Kinneberg, Garner, Babcock, and McIver. I'd say right now Tabor has the edge from uh, points off the bench with, <laughs> with Lily Veer. And we're going to get a timeout called here and not sure what's going on. Uh, I'm, I'm convinced it was right. There was three jump balls, I thought. It was Tabor's ball. I don't know what the controversy is. Well, friend's coach, Coach Jaderson, was convinced it was supposed to be there, and they checked the book, and they're ready to go again here. They get, they get 30 seconds back on the clock, or are they going to leave it at 23? Yeah, Coach Reed not happy about that. They stopped the game for to, to check something for the other coach and uh, didn't reset the shot clock. Some shot, shot clock down to 11 now. Baker drives. He's going to go all the way in, blocked, and by Jackson. Five seconds on the shot clock. So those drives to the bucket by McGee and uh, Baker that normally would be layups are going to be contested by Jackson at six foot three down low as number 23. And we have the Ashland Ryle checks in the top two shot blockers in Bowen and Jackson and Jackson like Bowen doesn't leave her feet. Yep. So doesn't have a lot of doesn't foul often on those. Uh oh. Oh, and we're going to get a second foul. And that well that on will McIver. get the shot clock. And that so. was worth. <laughs> yeah. That was that was worth it. It's twice now where the Blue Jays have benefited from. There was a two seconds on the shot clock there, and there's no way there would have been a shot taken. Yep. The Blue Jays will reset here. It was a hustle foul, so you can't really complain too much as a coach. But that is. And Berlin gets it inside and scores. Nice shot inside by Brooke Berlin. Catch and turn and shoot. Whether it's Berlin or McCoy to be in that. Uh, with that zone, that big pocket in the middle. Sure looks like Tabor was ready for the zone as Kinneberg sets the screen on Hendricks for McIver. Nice Berlin defense. with the rebound, gets it out to Hendricks. Hendricks brings it up quickly. Blue Jays trying to go quick here because they want to beat Jackson down the court. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Gets it into Owens. Wide open. Lynn with another rebound. Now gets it to Owens. Owens oh. blocked by Jackson. Had a couple shooters too. I think if Owens would have went straight up when she caught it instead of taking that one dribble, she'd have had a better chance. Jackson is, she's just tall down there and McIver goes nice all the way take. to the hole and scores. She's got a great left hand. Good first step there to get by Hendricks. 19-12 Blue Jays. It's like the uh, Falcons are back in man-to-man -man defense. Hendricks going to shoot from the elbow in and out. Mm -hmm. Jackson with a rebound. Gets it to McIver. And we'll get McCoy back in here at the next break. Kicked out. McIver getting to the lane. Good re defense and rebound there by Worth on Garner. Worth turns down the three, drives, cut off by Kenneberg, nowhere to go, gets it to Baker who comes and helps her out. Now Baker drives, kicks out when she runs into, oh my oh, goodness, uh, Ooh, um, Ber Brooke Berlin. Pulled out Jackson far enough. Backdoor cut. The she clear lays water, it up. The Clearwater Indian has come alive here in this game for the Blue Jays. 21-12. Yeah, 
McIver in rhythm, no good. Berlin with the rebound. Boy, the Blue Jay defense, only 12 points so far. Mismatch down low, and now it's not a mismatch. And Baker slides in for the offensive board. Picks up her dribble, gets it knocked away. 15 on the shot clock. Owens came down and had a mismatch on defense and wanted the ball, couldn't get it. Blue Jays couldn't quite get it to her. Now Owens for three, and oh. it's good. 12-point lead for the Blue Jays, 24-12. Another three-pointer there by Olivia Owens this time as she's fighting down low. And you see with, Worth on the back. Jackson. They are deciding to front when they can. Nice defense by Hendricks cutting off that left hand. And the, de the defense, and yeah, we got it. That's oh my be goodness. A travel, yeah. Well, it should have been a charge before yeah. it was a travel, but we'll take whatever we can get as Brooke Berlin nice doing a great job on defense. And that was uh, some incredible minutes there by the sophomore Berlin out of Clearwater. And we had a, we had a shift change, five in and five out for the Blue Jays. And I got to say, that's, uh, that's the most aggressive I've seen her play all year, and that's, that's a good sign. Yes for the Blue Jays in the future. Now Veer, Beam, Bowen, McCoy, and McGee in the game as McCoy lines up for a three, and it's oh. just off. Man. Looked like that was good. It sure did. Another wide open three for the Blue Jays. Babcock now with the ball for the Falcons. Ashlyn Ryle also in for the Falcons. Now inside to Garner. Goes up, Kent, oh. and she gets it to go. Strong move. So they took advantage of the mismatch down low. Tabor had help, but Garner still able to get it up and in. She got it too deep there. McCoy, top of the key. Trying to keep her dribble alive. Now picks up, goes down low to Bowen. Bowen with Jackson on her. Gets it to Veer. Veer oh. goes up. Can't get it to fall. Tries to get her own rebound, but Jackson right there. And there's a travel. Yeah, travel yeah. Kyber gets caught with the travel. And the reason she traveled was the fantastic defense, once again, by Maya McGee, one of the best defenders in the conference, forced that travel. That was a big number in the game up in uh, down in Wichita in January. Falcons had 26 turnovers that night, and so that really allowed the Blue Jays to keep the uh, another foul. 20, That's 20, her second, I believe. Second foul here early in this you know, middle of the second quarter. She'll come out of the game, and number one, Nadia Hagen, 5'4", sophomore from Humble, Texas, will replace her. There's only been a few fouls this game, and I think all the friends has happened right in the middle of the court. Yeah, so I think you're right. Hand off to Beam. Now McGee, top of the key, back in that oh, zone. Man, they had. I think they had Beam there. Going to go high post to McCoy. McCoy over to McGee in the corner. McGee shoots and scores. Oh. Three-pointer, Maya McGee. Everybody getting in on the three-point action for the Blue Jays tonight. Just clinical right there. They just picked apart that zone, went right in the middle, and uh, the zone had to uh, attack McCoy, and he had an open shooter. McCoy and McGee switching there on defense. Now McGee. Guarding Garner. Garner going all the way up and can't get it to fall. Bowen with the rebound. So I, good. Falcons look tired to me. McCoy, elbow out to Veer. Veer for three, and it's hey, good. Oh. Another three-pointer by Lily Veer, and a timeout, full timeout, called by the Friends Falcons. We'll take it with them. Blue Jays on top, 30-14. to 14. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. 
Fleming's Mini Storeall, the solution for your storage problems. Blue Jays obviously are shooting the ball really well, which is a good re one of the big reasons why they have this lead, but they are defending like crazy. Bowen has it. Unable to finish. And McGee's going to pick up a foul there after the rebound. That's going to be her second, and she'll have to take a seat as Hendricks comes back in. Unfortunate that last possession for Friends, they had a three-pointer that just dropped right off the bottom of the rim, which allowed that offensive rebound. Jackson Babcock, Johnson, Garner, and Hagen in for the Falcons. Hendricks, Beam, Bowen, Veer, and McCoy for the Blue Jays. Knocked away by McCoy. Couldn't quite get there. That's about three she's knocked away from the Falcons. And a steal there as Hagen tries to go up. Blue Jays come back quickly. We're going to get a travel. She saw McCoy across, and I think that was the pass, but just couldn't get it there before with too many steps. Hagen now getting a screen. From Jackson, Jackson goes up and it doesn't fall. Rebound, friends. We're going to get a jump ball. And that will stay with the friends Falcons. 19 on the shot clock. If it wouldn't have been a jump ball, it would have been a block shot. Bowen right there on defense. And McIver with two fouls checks back into the game for the Falcons. So this could be a key thing for the Falcons here. McIver. And another knocked away. <laughs> Hendricks knocked the ball away, and Veer right there to pick it up. Now Blue Jays will set up their offense. Veer has it over to Bowen, top of the key. Backdoor cut by Beam. She stops, goes up over the top of Jackson, mm -hmm. and Garner there for the rebound. So Jackson alters that shot by Beam. Oh. Second foul on McCoy. She'll sit here. And that'll bring Berlin back into the game the for Jays. the Blue Jays. 148 here. Second. Team mm. second. Berlin back in for no foul called there as Bowen has the ball. Could have been a travel, I think is what was well, Could have been a travel, could have been a charge, could have been a foul. I mean, referee's letting that go. Bowen top of the key. The game's kind of gone into slow motion all of a sudden. And Berlin gets it. She sh shoots. Oh, Veer somehow gets the rebound. Now Hendricks goes in over the top ah, another of Jackson. Shot. And Jackson just altering shots anytime the Blue Jays get anywhere near the basket. Friends, Falcons trying to dig in some more of that lead. Jackson going up against Bowen. Jackson Bowen lays trying it to up. get the foul. Six Good. points for Jackson. Jackson just put the ball down on the floor and went to the bucket. Just under a minute here. Hendricks for three, and it's short. short. Blue Jays gone cold here. Falcons trying to get it into under single digits. Lead down to 12 now. Backdoor cut by Gardner. And a good block there by Berlin down low, but a little bit of body. She'll get called for the foul. So McIver will shoot two. Or no, that's Gardner will shoot two. Checking back in for the Blue Jays. Number 43, Olivia Owens. Raylan Gardner at the line. Shooting two. Friends chipping away at that lead. 16-point lead at one point. First free throw, no good. About a five-second differential here for the Blue Jays. 
35 on the game clock, 30 on the shot clock. Like to see them score here. They haven't scored the last few minutes. Back in for the Falcons, number 20. Kinneberg coming in for the last 35 seconds the Falcons, for the Falcons. They're going to put on a little token pressure here. Also in the game for the Falcons, number four, Glasgow. Coach Reed calls a play, 15 on the shot clock. Oh, oh my goodness. Good grief, and it doesn't go, but Berlin right there, it goes right back up, no good, and then we're gonna get a jump ball, and it'll uh, go, stay with the Fal our friends, or stay with the Blue Jays. Man, two buckets that just did not fall for the Blue Jays. I don't Jays know how there. that didn't go in. That thing bounced around up there. They had a nice play called. Okay, we're gonna have to get something off here quick. 5.8 seconds left, no shot clock. Pass to Berlin, she turns, shoots. No good, and maybe went out of bounds. Yep. So and Berlin had a layup, but the pass was a little off the mark, and uh, she had to go reach back for it. And that half-court shot by Babcock, no good. And so we'll go into halftime at Tabor 30. Friends University 19. We'll be back in about 15. Hillsborough Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsborough Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsborough and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsborough Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. 
Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to powerlift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. 
Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. 
Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service Always ensuring a connection to work Ladies seamlessly, and stream continuously, I to to stay uninterrupted. Women's game, in between games, for our senior night presentation. All right, let's look at the halftime stats the here. And here we go. Get the score, 30 to 19 rebounds, almost even. 21 for the Falcons, 19 for the Blue Jays. 10 assists by the Blue Jays, only three for the Falcons. 10 turnovers to six for the Blue Jays. Fouls just about even. Leading the way for the Falcons. Taylor Jackson, six. Rayland Garner with six. Again, Lauren McIver with five. And once again, you saw the halftime stats there brought to you by Weens Real Estate. Kim Weens. If you want his number, give me a call. For the Blue Jays, leading the way off the bench. Freshman Lily Vera with 12. On the four for four shooting from behind the arc. Olivia Owens with five. Maya McGee, four. Brooke Berlin, four points and five rebounds. Both teams shooting 33% from the field. Falcons, one for five from the line. Blue Jays, seven for 14 from behind the arc. And here we go, Jim. Falcons will get us going here. Three pointer, and that's good. By Corey Babcock, gets the Falcons on the board here to start this third quarter. And the lead down into single digits now for the first time in a while. Hendricks, Bean, Worth. McCoy with the ball and Owens for the Blue Jays. Owens has it, gets it over to McCoy. Back to Owens. Goes over to Bean for a short two, and that's good. McIver, Babcock, Jackson, Garner, and Kenneberg in for the Falcons. Jackson drives, cut off by Owens. She kicks it out. Garner has it, guarded by Worth. She goes all the way in. Foul and a bucket by Garner. Blue Jays have got to be able to cut off those driving lanes. Garner will shoot the free throw here. Free throw no good. Rebound by Janisha Hendricks. She brings it up quickly, finds Beam. Beam to Owens. Now back down to Hendricks in the lane. Now off to Owens. She drives. She's going to kick it to Beam. Beam back to Owens. Owens fakes, goes up. Just off. Looked like she almost got, got a, altered her shot because somebody was going to block it or got hit in the elbow or something. That ball just kind of squirted off. Didn't funny. come off like you expected it. Jackson, Jackson up, top, up top. Gets it over to McIver. Hendricks. Good defense there by Hendricks. Shot clock at three. 
Hinneberg can't find anybody, and we get a five-second count. And a okay. shot clock violation. Pick your poison there. Could have been either one. Good defense again by the Tabor Blue Jays. 32-24, eight-point lead with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Pressure put on here now. McCoy with a little relief. Beam has it. Shot clock at 10. Goes over to Hendricks. Hendricks is blocked. Picked up by Gardner. She drives. She pushes it up. Worth going to be right there putting pressure on. And we're going to get a timeout called. Looks like a 30-second timeout by the Falcons once again. Tonight's game is brought to you by the Eitzen Agency. The Eitzen Agency is based out of Fairview, Oklahoma, and has locations all across the Midwest and is proud to be a sponsor of Blue Jay Athletics. A couple scores around conference. Bethany hosting Ottawa on, on top 33-16 at half. St. Mary's on top of McPherson at 43-29. And earlier in the afternoon, up in over in Evangel in Missouri there, Evangel with the, the victory Ladies against Sterling. 85 to 70. All right, that's down to two timeouts there for the friends. Is this a good time to mention uh, the KCAC tiebreaker rules and procedures? Well, should we wait till later? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not confident enough to be, to be speaking on that subject. That's, that's true. I'm not either. <laughs> friends, inbounds the ball. Oh, man, elbows up high. A lot of pressure on the guards when they pick up their dribble and. Garner goes up, tries to score, rebound Worth, and Owens comes up lame or off to the side here as somehow on that play we'll watch it again, and it looks like Owens took a shot to the ribs before that shot, and uh, she's struggling right now. like a shot to the ribs when you look at the replay and she's walking off <laughs> Bowen will check in for her checking in for Tabor number 31 Chloe Bowen pressure being put on here by the Falcons ball goes into Hendricks guarded by Garner Worth comes, pressure relief, gets it up to Beam, back to Worth, now down low to Bowen, Bowen to Hendricks, back to Bowen, and a bucket oh, and a foul. And a foul. <laughs> nice pass. <laughs> Bowen just in off the bench. Good ball movement there by the Blue Jays between Bowen and Hendricks. Pick up another foul there, and Bowen completes the three-point play for the Blue Jays to put them back up by 11, which was the deficit at halftime. Jackson gets it over. Back to Babcock. Steal Hit. this time by Maddie McCoy. She's going to go all the way in and lay it in for a two-pointer. She's been itching to do that the whole game. Lots of poke outs, but finally got that pick. She's uncanny at that. I'd hate, to, I'd hate to go up against her. Almost got another one. Going up top now, and McIver, or uh, McIver to Kenneberg. Caught McCoy on the switch there. She's trying to front, and no one behind to help. Haber breaks the press. Now Beam for a three, and too wow. much. Garner with the rebound. Garner will push it here, picked up by Worth. And Worth another. steals the ball from Garner. Gets it over to McCoy. McCoy will bring it across half court. Blue Jays will reset here. Beam has it. Shot clock at four. 
Bowen, long one, no good. Picked up by Jackson. No rebounders down there as Bowen was pulled yeah. out. To Bowen, Bowen would have followed her shot. The ball would have come right back to her. She was getting back on defense. Now Garner pushing off a little bit. No foul. Kenneberg has it up top over to Babcock. Now back to Kenneberg. Good defense there. Now oh, they no. leave Kenneberg wide open. She misses the wide open six-footer. She could have just walked it in. <laughs> Miscommunication by the Blue Jays. That was strange. I, one thing I was always told, you never leave the ball on defense. <laughs> never. That time, Tabor just kind of left Kenneberg alone. Backdoor uh, cut. Kicked out by Beam to Hendricks. Ah. Unable thought to hit that a, open three. Thought we had a layup there, and Beam passed up a layup. Kind of. She got too far into the back at basket. I think she thought she had to kick it out. Jackson goes up. Can't get it to fall. Goes up again. Still can't get it to fall. McCoy gets the rebound. Haber brings it up quickly. Ball Bowen Oof, has the ball. McCoy now fakes, drives. She'll go for the 16-footer, and oh, that man. one's off. So teams are getting a little tired out there, and maybe time for a substitution this time. Garner comes in, steals the ball away from Bowen, goes up, and the foul's called. Players just looking a little tired out there at the four-minute mark. Checking in Berlin, Veer, Baker, and McGee as Garner goes to the line where she has struggled a little bit tonight. And rolls that one that in. That one gets the front of the rim and rolls over the top. Both teams struggling from the floor this quarter. Ten-point lead by the Blue Jays. Just under four minutes to play. And another one off the front rim and in. Jaden Glasgow, 5'5 five, five sophomore, checking in for the Falcons. Replacing Babcock. Nine and point lead. Token pressure put on here by the Falcons. Inbounds to McGee. Single handedly break it, breaking that press. Now gets it to Berlin, back to McGee. So Blue Jays have that. Little press figured out. Now Veer has it over to Baker. Screen from Berlin. Shot clock at five. Berlin with a two pointer, no good. Bowen there for the rebound, kicks it out to McGee. McGee drives back to Bowen. Bowen fakes. She drives, kicks it out to McGee. Back to 10 seconds on the shot clock as Baker drives in, oh. blocked. Another foul on the Blue Jays. That's the second team foul, it looks like, third team foul. So that shot by Baker that normally nobody's going to block, Jackson does block, and that'll bring Owens back into the game for the Blue Jays, replacing Bowen. I think Jackson has four blocks on the evening. Babcock checking back in for the Falcons. Nine-point lead for the Blue Jays. Johnson also in for the Falcons. Good defense by the Blue Jays. Now Jackson gets a rebound, goes up, gets her own rebound again, now fouled. The Blue Jays just getting caught out of position a little bit down low, unable to get the rebound. Jackson at six foot three, able to reach over the top, will go to the line. Shoot two. First one's no good. That's why she's one of the top rebounders. You see uh, Owens there on the replay, has position. Just too far underneath, I think. That free throw no good. Berlin picks up the rebound. Berlin asked for a little help there. <laughs> I think she did get hacked on the arm, but referee's going to let that go 90 feet away. 
Beer has it on the wing. It's a screen. And yeah. we're going to get a foul called. I think that's going to be a holding or an arm bar on uh, Glasgow. Only the second team foul. Jackson will take a break here. Sandy Hotman will check in for her six footer out of Pillager, Minnesota. See if we can maybe get Owens down in a post here. Oh, oh. And it's going to go out against, uh, out on, out of bounds off of, I believe that was Hotman. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Blue Jays to inbounds. Nine point lead. Oh, and nice. Berlin able to get in front of the defender down low, and she's got that little shot down. We've seen that a bunch this year. 11 point lead for the Blue Jays. Just over two in this quarter. And just calmly there, McIver hit that three. Back down to eight. Can't leave her open for sure. Blue Jays haven't allowed too many open looks from the perimeter tonight. As McGee drives, kicks off to Baker. Back to Baker, wide open, but McGee didn't see her, so she drives. Shot clock at six. Oh, nice Long rebound. rebound and the uh, ball came out. Oh, McIver McIver open again for open. three, and that one's off. Baker fighting for the rebound. Now Berlin on the ground, and we're going to get a jump ball. Goes to the Blue Jays. Eight-point lead, a minute 28 left. Things are heating up here in the Tabor College Gymnasium. Berlin getting on the floor here. Ooh, Baker has it. A little bit of pressure. Let's see if the Blue Jays can get it across. Yeah. One of them was a foul there. <laughs> There's a few bumps. Well, he actually called the first one. The second one came after the first one had already been blown. So. Maddie McCoy comes in here. Inside to Owens. Owens drives, goes up, and, and scores, and the foul. Probably have to bring Jackson in soon. Post defense, just not strong enough for Owens down low. See the stats there again by Weems Real Estate, 11.2, 4.7 rebounds. Owens completes that three-point play to put that lead back up to 11. One minute here in this third quarter. 11-point lead is where this quarter started. Oh. Babcock has it for the Falcons. Gets a screen. Oh, all the way to the bucket. Breakdown there by the Blue Jay defense. Doesn't happen very often, and now we get a pressure there by the Falcons. Off to McCoy and Bucket, so assist from Owens to McCoy. Breaking that little trap that the Friends Falcons put on. Almost worked. They were able to get out of it. Last and shot here, 13 on the shot clock. I think McIver wants to shoot this. She does. McCoy gets the rebound. 5.9 seconds oh, left. Oh, she got Owens, but uh, not quick enough. And we started with 11-point lead, and we will go to the fourth quarter with that same lead. We'll be right back. 
Many of you know that the ITIN agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the ITIN agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itinagency.com. All right, we're back here. Get ready for the fourth quarter. Friends Falcons will inbounds. Looks like starters both uh, were for the Blue Jays. Not quite all the starters for the, the Friends Falcons. Gardner has it. Drives. Okay, it will stay with Friends. It could have been a foul after that shot. After the ball I don't know went why, out. I don't know why the shot. Oh, there it is. At 20 now. Ball's inbounded. McCoy right there with Garner. He backs off. Garner drives. Goes in. Scores. Oh, doesn't score. Somehow gets her own rebound. Beam right there. That should have been a, a jump, jump ball. ball. And it is. Good job by Cassidy Beam. Getting her hand on the ball after that rebound. All ball. You can see it there on the replay. Coach Reed fighting for some of that over the back here in that last possession. Well, I think we'll pressure. see some more of this pressure. We're going to see a lot more pressure here in this and trapping here in this uh, fourth quarter. Tabor gets it past half court. Backdoor cut by Worth. She goes in and wow. scores a layup. Nice, yeah. nice look there by Owens. Another I assist. Was, like I think it was last game you mentioned when those traps. We just have someone just cut to the hole and seeing that tonight. Yeah. Tabor really moving well without the ball tonight. As number one, Hagen drives in, picks up her dribble. Nowhere to go. Now finds Glasgow. Glasgow goes inside to Jackson. Jackson can't get it to fall on a rebound. Pulled away by Owens. Oh. Owens and Jackson slow getting back and beam there oh. for the layup. Almost thought we were going to see a travel. And we get a timeout, a full timeout. One left. And that brings McIver back into the game. We'll step aside with it, with them for this full time out and be back in a minute. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com.
All right, we're back here. During that break, I think Coach Reed is imploring his ladies to finish this game here over the yeah. next few minutes. And yeah, he said, I, I could hear clearly clear up where I'm sitting. Don't let up. Which I totally agree. McCoy slapping the ball away again. Garner might have gotten away with a travel. Jump ball again. It'll go with the Falcons this time. Tell you, the friends has uh, missed a couple chippies here recently. Ashlyn Ryle, a 5'8 junior from Friendswood, Texas, checking into the game for the Falcons. They go straight into Jackson. She scores over Owens, left-handed. Got it way deep. All she had to do was turn and shoot. 48-35 Blue Jays here going into the, no trap. the beginning of the fourth quarter. No trap this time. Beam, Beam in the corner, down to Owens. Owens tries to find Hendricks, and now we're going to get a timeout, 30-second timeout by the Blue Jays. And there's plenty of those. Coach Reed still has four. So that does give me time, Jim, since we're in the fourth quarter now to talk about that tiebreaker, and I spent quite a bit of time looking at that uh, before the game tonight, and the tiebreaker would be... It goes head-to-head -head of the top team's tie. Now, the only way we're going to get a tie is if Tabor would uh, somehow in the next eight minutes and four seconds blow a 13-point lead. And uh, we're not doing that. But anyway, a tiebreaker would be head-to-head. -head. Tabor comes out on top of the tiebreaker the way I looked at it. So uh, Which, uh, let's not take any chances, though. Let's just yeah, finish let's, this uh, off and uh, win the conference outright. The bigger question is, do the Nets come down then? No, they, it's because there's two more conference games still. Okay. But we finish away, and here's the inbounds to Worth. Worth long with that. Owens with the rebound away from Jackson. Beam for a three in the corner now, and it's Boom. good. There we go. Cassidy Beam. 16-point lead. Three-pointer for the Blue Jays, and we're back to 16. That was ties the biggest lead that the Blue Jays have had well, tonight. Well, the Blue Jays do have a game Wednesday here. Well, that's true. There is a game Wednesday and then a, a, on the road at McPherson. So if they finish this game and win Wednesday, they clinch. So. And foul going to be called on Owens. And that'll send Jackson to the line. Owens just moved in just a little bit with the body on that last one. That probably could have uh, gone either way, but foul is called. It'll send Jackson to the line to shoot two. Coach Reed trying to get... Uh, Trying to get uh, three seconds called there. Jackson with the first free throw. And the second. That'll bring Kinneberg into the game. Jackson will take a seat. Seven and a half minutes to play, and I'm guessing she won't be there very long. Not seeing the trap anymore after the Blue Jays that seem to have an answer to that. There's a little bit of a trap on the wing. Haber gets out of it. Hendricks for three. And oh. it's good. And they're going to say a two-pointer. Her toe was on the line. That's okay. We'll take those two points. McIver looking for the shot here. Hendricks all over. Nowhere to go. Hands off to Babcock. Now Babcock. As Owens steals the oh, ball, now man. get. Now we're going to get a block. This time Owens will take care of it, and she'll get fouled. I believe by Garner. And both teams only with one foul. They have let them play the whole four quarters. It has been consistent there. So Blue Jays got away with, with that, and they're going to check the, the. What are we checking for? There was potentially a couple elbows thrown, so uh, I didn't see any. Well, I didn't see anything. Uh, that would warrant a flagrant, but uh, they'll take check it out. 650 here. Once again, tonight's game brought to you by the Eisen Agency. We'll look here at the rebound and then Owens has it. She did swing around there at the end, but no contact was made, I believe. 
This seems like play on here. The Eitzen Agency is a locally owned and operated agency since 1962. Eitzen Agency Incorporated provides quality insurance solutions to individuals and businesses with our competitive insurance coverages. You can protect your home, your auto, your business, and your life. Providing insurance for churches is one of our specialties. Also stay with us after this game before they get going here with the men's warm-up. It is senior night here, and they will recognize some seniors. Women's basketball, men's basketball, and also the cheer squad. So it looks like there's nothing going here. Women's basketball seniors, Mallory Wilson of Wichita, Kansas, Maya McGee, Ardmore, Oklahoma, Chloe Bowen of Tahlequah, Oklahoma, Janisha Hendricks, Topeka, Kansas. Here we go. Alicia Baker, Jordan Lowry, Olivia Owens. There's a lot of seniors to be recognized tonight on the women's side. That's the third on Gardner, so she'll have to be careful as she uh, guards the ball here the rest of the game. Blue Jays trying to increase that 16-point lead. Get it into Owens. Uh, just not able to, to hit that. Kinnebrough with the rebound. Trying to go off the glass with it. Just didn't get it quite in that little white square up there. Rolled off the rim. Gardner hands over to McIver. Once again, I can't say enough about Tabor's defense tonight. Holding the Friends Falcons at right now. To 37 points in three and a half quarters, almost three and a half quarters of play. They've also forced 16 turnovers, held them to 30% from the field. Beam will set up for another three. Oh. That one's just short. From our view, it sure looked nice, didn't it? Yeah, it did. McIver there, and they were going to get a oh. look like uh, Worth oh. had it knocked away. Jackson will check back into the game for the Falcons. For the Blue Jays, McGee, Bowen, and Veer check in. Tabor sure hasn't lost anything from the players off the bench tonight. Good defense there by McGee. Rebound beam. Oh, and McCoy. Bowen was really <laughs> Bowen. blocking out that made that rebound possible. Bowen took Jackson out of the play, basically. Five. McCoy has it. <laughs> Gets it over to Veer. Veer has been a little quiet here in this second half. Could have gone right back to her there. She had a three-pointer. Now shot clock winding down. McGee's going to have to shoot quickly, and that's not going to get there. There was a couple shots that uh, were given up there. I thought McCoy had a couple looks there, but uh, good defensive stand by the Falcons. There was a back pass that, that we missed there when we were bringing the ball this way and go straight back to where the ball came from, and that's not thought about a lot of times. And McIver drives on McGee, goes up and under and scores. Nice play there by Lauren McIver. You mentioned uh, McIver coming into this game as someone who's been playing really well, and she has had some big buckets tonight. Beam to McGee, top of the key. Screen comes over the elbow, shoots, yeah. and scores. That's her shot right there. Yeah, Jackson unable to step up there, and so she was wide open off of that screen. I'd take that shot all night long for Maya McGee. This time Bowen has to come off of Jackson. Oh, almost a pickoff there. Gardner checks back in for the Falcons and Brooke Brulin for the Blue Jays. Veer still leads the way with 12 points, but haven't she hasn't scored in a bit, so. No points for her, and I don't know if she's taking a shot here in this uh, second half. And Berlin comes over to help on defense, and she'll foul Hagen, send Hagen to the line to shoot two. 
And we are just under the four minute mark now with Tabor still holding on to a 16 point lead. I think Maya had that taken care of. First free throw, no good. Along with that 12 points by Veer, Cassidy Beam with nine, Owens with eight. Oh. Jackson gets the tip, scores underneath. No free throws, but they get the put back anyway. Lead down to 14. We'll watch this. Uh, that turnover. Hagen gets, to, knocks the ball out from behind. Veer on defense on Hagen, now back down low. Ball's tossed over the top of Jackson. Blue Jays should push here. Look, Berlin, a quick shot, and it falls. A little nervy, but we'll take it. <laughs> that was, oh. Shot went off the back iron, bounced straight up and in. Couple Blue Jays getting ready to check back in. Gardner has it, gets a screen. And Jackson. Jackson tries to go up. Now McGee fighting for the ball. We're going to get a jump ball, I believe, and that should go to the Blue Jays. We'll have Hendricks, Worth, and Baker all checking back into the game for the Blue Jays. Fresh legs, and uh, I think this group will handle that, uh, that pressure well. Probably see McCoy here before too long. Three oh four left here. Hendricks, Hagen, Kinneberg, Garner, McIver, and Jackson in for the Falcons. Berlin up top gets it over to Worth, over to Baker, Hendricks. Shot clock at seven. Shot clock at four. Worth a pull up two and no good. Gardner with the rebound. And Hendricks gonna pick up the foul. Not a terrible foul there. They had some momentum and the they do need to watch getting to that five mark. 231 here, 13 foul. Hagen. And we're going to get the ball knocked away. It looked like Hendricks knocked it out. It'll stay with the Falcons. And McCoy, just like he said, checks into the game. Replacing Berlin. So getting some upperclassmen back in the game here to finish out this last two and a half minutes. I think you'll see it's all the starters except Bowen. And I think Bowen has done a good job as anyone on Jackson. Three-pointer by McIver. No good. Rebound by Hendricks. And Hendricks will. And Jackson just <laughs> not able to get down. Oh, my goodness. Great job by Janesha Hendricks. Just not giving up her dribble. Long pass down low to Gar Garner. Garner goes up and scores a scoop shot. Now Hendricks has it again, being guarded by Hagen. Lots of noise here in the gym. I'm not sure what exactly the... I think they're looking for a blocking foul. Cheering for their team. I'm not <laughs> sure, but either way, Worth has it off to Bowen. Baker up top. High off. Man. Kind of forensic play here. And McCoy going to pick up... Oh, we're going to get a travel. I thought that was a foul for sure on McCoy. The travel must have come first. We watch it here. I think the I think the I think she's just think, out of control I think there. The shot. Jordan Lowry checking in the game for Bowen. Jordan Lowry, one of those to be recognized tonight, a senior night. Still that 16 McCoy point lead. McCoy came up and kind of just rammed into Garner. Should have. Well, I should have been a foul, but it wasn't. We'll just go back the other way. It's not going to matter in the overall outcome of this game as Hendricks now being guarded by Babcock. 
Off to Lowry. Lowry being guarded by Jackson. She'll just shoot over the top. No good. Baker takes a fall. Comes up holding her arm. And that ball goes out on friends. And Baker's noticeably hurt. Checking back in for Tabor, number three, Cassidy B. Hopefully Might be a funny, right. maybe it's a funny bone. Yeah. So let's hope. She was just kind of dangling it there. Yep. Hendricks brings the ball up, being guarded by Babcock. Goes behind the back. Screen from Lowry. Worth yep. looking for Lowry. McIver is going to get called for the foul. It'll reset the shot clock to 20. Can't quite run it out, but uh, we'll get close. Boy, like you said a couple times tonight, the, the, the name of the game tonight was just defense. 43 points here for the Falcons team. That's been, you know, 12 in a row. They've been putting up 70 a game or so. And, um, and uh, 19 point lead. Maddie McCoy and finally Mc hits that three. McCoy throwing a little gas on the fire there with that three-pointer. We saw a motivated Blue Jay team tonight. Motivated on both ends of the court. Yeah. They really were fired up tonight for this game. and They came to play here at home. One more home game as Jackson drives on Lowry. She gets her own rebound and scores. Tabor will dribble this out. That'll be a 16-point victory by the one-loss Blue Jays over the two-loss Friends Falcons. Not what we would have expected tonight. Would have thought that this would have been uh, come down to the wire. Blue Jays dominant, especially starting that fourth quarter. Had 11-point lead, and they pushed it out pretty quickly. Blue Jays asserted themselves on both ends of the court tonight. And I don't know if you have final, do you get the final stats up there? Well, uh, Blue Jays shot just under 40%, 39.7. Friends were 34%. With Blue Jays, 45 from three, nine for 20. Wow. And they also, again, uh, forced 19 turnovers. So um, those were two of the big uh, stats. Another thing, uh, last game, one of the things that kept friends in the game was offensive rebounds, and they uh, out they had about, I think, 11 or 12 more offensive rebounds when they played in January. Tonight, that number was lower, down to about five, so Blue Jays were able to, to mitigate that a bit, and hot shooting and great defense, um, and now the Blue Jays go to 19-1 and one with two games left. They're getting close to hopefully clinching that conference title and a birth into the national tournament. With the loss, Friends goes to third place. Um, they go to 17 and three. Um, St. Mary's with the win today, they go to 18 and two, so they will be in sole possession of second place. And uh, we potentially could see the Friends team again at Hartman if all goes well, so. Yeah, that's true. The season is not over. We got Kata up at home on uh, Wednesday, I believe, and then travel to McPherson next Saturday. So the season is not over by any means. And Friends and St. Mary's both have at least, I think, uh, maybe at St. Mary's has Bethany yet. Bethany uh, yeah. has our one loss, and so they can knock off anybody in the conference. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, still got some business to take care of. We got senior night coming up right now, and we got a lot of seniors, uh, particularly on the women's side, to be recognized. Quite a few, uh, several on the men's side as well. Not as many. Stay tuned and watch your favorite player get recognized here on senior night. Once again, Tabor 62, Friends 46. Like That'll be it for Jim Paulus and Rod Ham. Signing off.
head coach Matt Ward, and this is the same about Jordan. Jordan is everything you would want in a Taylor College student athlete. He is the leader on campus and consistently does the right thing. He has battled through injuries in his career here, but he has done that with such a positive attitude. It has been a pleasure to have Jordan in our program, and we are excited for his future. He is a six-time member of the Dean's List, including two times receiving highest honors for a GPA over 3.85. He is majoring in history and secondary education. He plans to get married in June, followed by student teaching in the fall. He plans to be a history teacher at the conclusion of his student teaching. He is accompanied by Jennifer Maxfield, Jason Maxfield, and Juliana Maxfield. His own parents are David and Michelle Edgar. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Maxfield. Our next senior is Jake Tavola. Came in from the United Kingdom. James has been a four-year player in the Blue Jay basketball program. Coach Warren had this to say about James. James is a young man that has gotten better in his last two years. He has made a strong commitment to being a student first, and I am extremely proud of him for that. James has brought a joy each day and a calm demeanor during this season. We are excited for what the future holds for James. Prior to tonight's game, James has played in a combined 69 varsity contest throughout his career. During this time, he has scored 302 points and grabbed 196 rebounds with a career high coming last season of 17 points at McPherson College. He is majoring in business entrepreneurship with a minor in graphic design here at Tabor. He is accompanied by David Edgar, Cedric Armstrong, Cedric Armstrong, and Demarcus Fisher. His own parent is Joyce Kessler.
34% from three-point range. He recorded a career high of 17 points versus McPherson last season. He is an eight-time member of the Dean's List, including five times receiving highest honors for a GPA over 3.85. He is majoring in elementary education and has accepted a third-grade teaching position at Hillsborough at Hillsborough Elementary School. This evening is accompanied by his parents, Kyle and Mark Kemper, along with his sisters, Kenzie and Bailey, and their families. His host family is Sean and Miranda Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, Yeah. 
14 block shots. Jordan was voted most valuable player on the junior varsity team by her teammates on multiple occasions. And she was also selected as most improved player her freshman year. She has been named to the Dean's List, the Blue Jay Honor Roll, and has received academic all-conference recognition. She was also named NAI All-America Scholar Athlete in 2023. She will graduate with a double major in biology and secondary education. She is currently student teaching at Newton High School. Her parents are Jamie and Josh Lowry, and her host family is David and Joanne Lowry.
Many of you know that the ITIN agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. Many of you know that the ITIN agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the ITIN agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itsonagency.com. Many of you know is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're 